Hello and welcome to the Canon Ring Light Hack, internal battery powered version. Now with this awesome hack, you'll be able to make a macro ring light that directly connects to your uh, camera and is powered by your camera. Now if you've watched any of my previous hacks, you'll notice I've used external batteries, for example, three triple the double A's or a rechargeable phone battery uh, like a BlackBerry uh, lithium ion pack, which you can charge with a phone. However, this hack, which is, I guess, version number two of the sequence, uses the internal battery of the camera. Now, why is it better? Well, first of all, it's a cleaner and a layout, simpler to wire. Uh, there's less weight and bulk, there's less parts to deal with, and less breakage. The other thing is, and most importantly, is you only have to charge the camera, not the BlackBerry or other phone or external batteries. All you need is to deal with one charger and one battery that powers both the camera and the light. So it's all in there. Now, what do you need? For now, uh, you should, first of all, get your ring light. You'll also need a few things like a soldering iron, some solder, a thin wire, a switch, screwdriver, and some hot glue uh, to stick your ring light directly to your camera. Once you've gathered all those supplies, you're ready to start the project. Depending on your camera, it may take a little while, uh, but uh, I'll show you the steps for the Canon SD780. First of all, I had to remove the screws on the cover to reveal the front, reveal the front of the cover. You'll notice the circuit board on the left and the lens on the right. The trick now is to find out where you can tap uh, your battery voltage off of that PCB. So it just so happens that with this camera, the internal battery contacts located in the compartment there are at the end. You can see three of them. Those three pads somehow connect to the board that you saw on the front face. And you'll notice how I found them. So there is the battery, um, and basically the two contacts at the edges are plus and minus. The middle one is for something else. But uh, the actual plus and minuses, as you can see, are at the far left and right. So we're going to try to trace where those contacts connect to on the PCB. And when I looked at the PCB board on the camera, I flipped it around. I looked at those contacts and I made sure they were joining up by using a continuity tester. And lo and behold, the plus and minus of those two, um, th th those three pads that you see there on the, on the front board are actually just connected to those three uh, copper colored internal contacts where the battery hooks up. So if I just tap some wires off of that, I can then essentially get um, a parallel connection into the battery, a positive and negative. And uh, what I'll do is I'll bring the wires across and pop it through the hole where the optical viewfinder is there, circled by yellow, because that's the closest I can get a nice opening to the lens. So you'll see there's the optical viewfinder on the front case. Um, you can just make it a little larger and sneak the wires through that. You'll never use the optical viewfinder anyway, and plus uh, when you put your ring light, it'll cover that anyway. So there, you, sometimes you have to cut away a bit of plastic or metal um, to make some space for the wires, but that shows you how the wires just sneak through the little hole, and they just run a tiny length inside the case just to sneak out to the outside. Solder your wires on. Then assemble back your camera, and once you get your wires out, you can wire in your light and switch. So that's step number three. Now you can use various switches. The actual ring light itself comes with a switch, but it's not very reliable. Um, it breaks easily, and so what I do is I connect my own switch. Now, remember to mind the polarity, because your LED ring light only works in a certain polarity. LEDs are diodes, and they only they have to be connected up the right way. So if you're not sure and you just want to try both ways, one of them will light up, the other one won't. If you can see the writing on your PCB uh, for the ring light or if yours might have the markings, you'll notice a nice plus for the circuit that's positive and a minus next to the tab or the pad that's supposed to be to the minus. So just connect it up that way so you don't have to switch them after. So there you can see the ring light. It's been soldered onto the wires that exited the case of the camera, and I hot glued it onto the front of the camera. And in series with that light is the switch. 
Now I have the light, the switch on the ring light set to on, so it's not relevant anymore. And I use my own switch to actually turn on and off the ring light because it's more reliable. And that's a push button switch. I just click it in and out and it toggles. When I click, it stays on. And when I click it again, it goes off. So you want a switch that will stay on permanently or off permanently depending on the clicking. Um, now another camera that I made at the same time, uh, uses pretty much the same exact thing. The only difference is I didn't have the same switch. So I use just a simple, um, you know, three way switch here. Or, and you can use a two way switch. Mine will go to the middle and then off to one side or the other. I just use one side of the three way switch. And essentially when I flip it on, light goes on. When I flip it off, light goes off. Now, the nice thing is, those are my two hack cameras. Um, the nice thing is that the LEDs take up almost no um, amperage. Um, so your battery can pretty much power both the camera and the lights at the same time with very little uh, battery loss. And you'll notice that you know when you use this, you'll you'll pretty much run the same length of battery. So again, just wanted to thank you for watching and uh, hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like it, please give me a thumbs up and thank you.